Hey everyone, Turkey Diode here, and today I want to do a quick review of the ILS and TACAN in the A10 Warthog in DCS. Now, there are a lot of tutorials out there, um, some of them date back before there's some updates to the module, and you know a lot of them do a good job uh, explaining what the ILS does and the TACAN does, and uh, you know I implore you, go out, check them out, uh, they're good material. But what I want to talk about today is some of the more specific things that I've had issues with trying to adapt those um, tutorials to DCS today. Now, I don't know if some of these are bugs or if there's just, you know, issues in general or if people just have a uh, misunderstanding of how ILS and TACAN works. Uh, but today I want to just go over some of the things I've learned and help uh, those of you who have been having trouble with the ILS and TACAN, um, you know, maybe find some success. So let's hop into the cockpit here and uh, what I'm going to do, uh, let me actually look at the map real quick here. Uh, I've got a pretty basic, uh, basic flight plan here. I'm going to start here in my Warthog up at about uh, about 10,000 feet. And our goal here today is to land at Almanad Air Force Base. Now, uh, first things first, uh, and you know, if you've watched other tutorials, you probably know this. If you click on the air base, uh, you actually get some good information on here. And let me scroll in a little bit. Uh, hopefully can all see this well. Um, we're going to be landing today on runway 9. And I know this because the wind is blowing from the east to the west. And that pretty much brings me to the first thing I found, is that ILS, at least in DCS, and at least on the air bases I've tested it on, um, only seems to work if you have, um, or in the direction that the ATC uh, tells you to land. So. Uh, because of the way the wind's blowing, when I call uh, the Air Force Base here, they're going to say, okay, we're going to land on runway 9 from the left to the right here. And so they're only going to turn on the ILS on that end of the runway going out towards uh, where the airplanes are going to be coming from. So if I was trying to land at this one from the backside here, and even if I were to use the ILS for that uh, runway, which is 27, they do not have that turned on. So that's the first thing uh, that I really see uh, that has tripped, at least me up as I've been going through this. Um, so second thing is that, um, and I mean, this kind of makes sense, but uh, they tend to, ATC, TC, well, ATC tends to uh, make whichever runway is uh, gonna have you land uh, with the wind coming towards you uh, as the, the runway that they're authorizing you to land on. Um, and, and that makes sense. Uh, you Generally, when you fly an airplane, you want to land uh, against the wind so that um, you get good airflow over your wings and you don't have to be traveling as fast with the ground speed to uh, make up for the uh, speed that you're going in the air. So, you know, if the wind's coming at you 100 miles per hour and you're going forward 100 miles per hour, you're going to kind of be hovering there. On the flip side, if the wind's going with you 100 miles per hour and you're traveling through the air at 100 miles per hour, you now have a ground speed of 200 miles per hour. So to have a slower ground speed, uh, typically you land against the wind. So um, yeah, enough talking about that. So I'm going to hop in the airplane here. Now, I'm not going to remember any of this because um, what I like to do in the airplane is use the d divert function. So uh, again, if you've seen other tutorials, you probably know about this. Uh, let's go ahead, we're gonna go to the CDU page here. And then I'm gonna come up here, we're gonna hit function two, which is gonna hit the nav page. And with the nav page open, we're gonna go ahead and click on divert. So now this has a list of the closest uh, airports that uh, we can land at. And I am gonna click on this button for Albanad Air Force Base. And there you go. So we're going to use this information. Now, let's say you don't know, you know, what way you're landing. And also, let me back up real quick. Um, one other thing to note here is that some Air Force bases do not have ILSs on both sides. Um, that's, uh, or not Air Force bases, but runways. Some runways don't. And let's see if we can find one. These ones look like they do. That one doesn't have any ILS. But uh, I know on the Caucasus map, oh, there's one. Uh, a few of those don't, uh, but here, this one, 19, has ILS, one does not. So that's another thing just to keep in mind uh, as you're choosing the airport. But coming back to Almanad, that one does. So uh, when you use the divert function, you can see here, you 
kind of break these into columns here. You've got runway 27 with the ILS for that runway, and runway 9 with the ILS for that runway. So that's good information to have. We also have the TACAN code, and this just says 99, but I know from the other screen it's 99X. So uh, at this point, we're going to go ahead, we're going to call the ATC, and uh, we're going to ask them uh, if we can land. So. Springfield, 1-1, one, one, inbound. Okay. okay, pause. Oh, real pause. Okay, so um, what they're saying here is that they want us to fly a heading of 081. Okay, whatever. But uh, they also want us to run uh, land on runway 09. So that's, that's the important information here. So we're going to land on 09. We're going to use that ILS. They're also giving us our uh, barometric pressure, the 29.72. So that we're going to want to adjust that uh, so that we have that um, in here so that we actually know where our altitude is uh, if our radar altimeter uh, goes down or, you know, if we just want to know uh, for, you know, fun. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and unpause it. So 2972. Okay, and they also want us to fly heading of 081. So we don't have to do this part, but I'm going to do it anyways. 081. Okay, let's see, 6781. But the important one here, so that's our heading bug. And that doesn't, that's just kind of an indicator. It doesn't really mean anything other than just seeing it there. But the important one here is the course set. So that's the third thing that a lot of people get wrong here, is that we want to run, land on runway 9. Now, if I click and drag this guy, you can see this, this is spinning. Um, 360, 36 uh, represents, you know, full circle here. And basically, we are going to set the direction that we are going to be landing. Because without doing this, what we end up doing with ILS, and again, if you've seen videos, you know that this is going to split off and it's going to kind of tell you what direction to fly so that you get lined up with the runway. If you don't have that set, it ain't going to be pointing you in the right direction. So, runway 9, we're going to set this to 9. I'm sure you could get real particular and get into the decimal point, but 9's good enough. Um, the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to set my TACAN to 99. Now, the difference between TACAN and ILS, TACAN is kind of like a homing beacon. It just points you in the direction of um, where it's at, and then you can actually reference from that direction um, a vector, if you will. Uh, but that's really all it's doing. Now, if you do transmit as uh, in addition to receive, so receive, you can get your bearing. Transmit, receive, TR here, allows you to actually get your distance from the TACAN beacon. So that is handy as well. But uh, 99, let's go ahead and put that in here. So I'm using the mouse wheel. Up, 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 99. Right click, right click for transmit receive. Uh, I know you can fiddle, or at least you used to be able to fiddle with the buttons over here to uh, get the sound so you can hear the beeps. Um, you know, if you want to hear the beeps, go ahead and play with it, but uh, not really necessary for what we're doing. Um, but yeah, there you have it. TACAN is set up, and now we can, um, let's see here, transmit receive. What have I done? Oh, TACAN's on. So we're not getting our miles yet on here, but I'm wondering, I'm not paused, but we will, uh, we'll see what's going on here as we, uh, as we continue here. The next thing we want to set up here is ILS. So again, runway nine, one, one, zero point seven. So coming over here to the ILS, I'm going to one, one, zero. I'm scrolling up with my mouse wheel and then down, down, down to point seven. And then really important here, right click to turn on the power so with the power on you can actually now hit the ILS and you can see that we are actually already um, getting that getting that frequency coming to the airplane and it's telling us that we still need to fly straight forward to intercept the glide slope coming from the airport that's over here on our right uh, one other cool thing is when you do this divert function it will actually set you uh, set your speed on the airport so that's the guy that's what we're flying to and uh, if I look at the F10 map you can actually see that if we were to fly 
in a straight line to get to this Air Force base, this airport, we would need to basically come up this way and come over to the right and then land. So uh, that's what's reflecting here. And you gotta go forward and then eventually we'll get to this white line and it should all line up. Technically you wanna turn before you get to the white line so you actually like end up land, you know, right on the white line as you finish your turn, but you know, practice, it's all good. Ain't gonna hurt anything if you go past it a little bit. So uh, let's see, we got our course, we've got these guys on. Uh, make sure you have your TACAN and ILS selected, otherwise nothing's going to happen. Uh, if you're doing an ILS landing, you don't necessarily need your TACAN on. Um, you know, you, you can if you want, but whatever. ILS is the one that you're really going to want for this. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to unpause, and, oh, and actually had our miles. So now the TACAN is uh, doing something here. So I'm unpausing. I'm ready to fly. I'm sure you guys are tired of me talking. So we're going to come around. Now, right now, you can see this needle. And uh, the ILS, basically, you want to fly towards the needles. Uh, but we're not quite on our glide slope yet. So we can pretty much just ignore what's going on up here and just wait until we actually get lined up over here. I'm sure there's some real pilot out there that's yelling at their computer screen listening to me on this. And I apologize. But again, this is just, you know, if you're having trouble with ILS and you're trying to get something to work so you can actually start practicing it, that's that's really my goal here. I want want you guys to be able to to get into this, play with it, and have fun doing it. So I'm gonna pause again real quick. You can see the line is coming over, and that's telling me that we're about ready to be lined up on that vector that's gonna take us straight in towards the runway. So I'm gonna start turning, and we should be about on to it by the time I pull out this turn. Okay, so cool. We're lined up with the runway. Yay. Now, next thing we gotta do is get lined up with the ILS. So the ILS, it takes a little bit of time to uh, to really get it dialed in, or not dialed in, to pick it up from the airport. Uh, it's not an infinite beam that comes shooting out from the thing. Uh, you do gotta get close. I've heard some sources say 10 miles. Uh, we're going to see what it does for us today. Right now we're at about 30 miles. And as we come in, uh, the one thing I can say is that the glide slope is at a 3 degree uh, de declination, decline. You're going to go 3 degrees down uh, on the glide slope. That's your goal. And so if I'm looking at where the Air Force Base here is, we're you know a little past 3 degrees but not too bad. So I feel pretty confident that by the time the ILS uh, is strong enough that we can pick it up in the airplane here, we're going to be pretty much right on our glide path. So cool. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. We're going to get a little bit closer. And at some point, you're going to see this little red flag on the left here go away. Now one other little thing that does get people a little confused, and we're going to see it once we get closer here, is that the... Here, perfect. We have now fully captured the signal, uh, the ILS signal coming at us from the airport here. The thing is, is we don't have our horizontal um, needle yet. And that is because we are actually too high. So see this little indicator right here? When that forward flag went away, this uh, needle popped up, and this is telling us that we are too high. We want to chase this needle, or this indicator, just like we would the needle, as it uh, would appear here. And it's just basically saying that we are too far off for us to uh, see the needle yet. So, no worries. We're just going to start dropping down a bit. And uh, once we do, once we get to that negative 3 degrees, uh, we're going to see that needle pop up on the indicator there. So I'm just going to dive down here, because, you know, why not? <laughs> um, speed up just a little bit, so we are pretty high. And there you go, you can see it coming up, and bam, here comes the needle. Perfect. Okay. And look at that, we're about negative 3 degrees. So I'm going to start slowing down a little bit, but the whole goal here is to follow the needles and 
make a cross of them and pretty much put them right on where your uh, total velocity and vector is uh, going to be, or this guy. And if he's pointed right at the runway, and we are properly in line with the ILS, so we're not too high or not too low, and our vector is right there, everything should be a pretty good um, cross there on the indicator and we should uh, be able to land pretty easily. So I'm going to speed this up again because I know uh, you guys probably have better things to do than listen to me ramble on about ILS and TACAN. But uh, let's go ahead and we're going to do a good landing here real quick. So I'm going to go ahead I'm going to drop my gear. Let's go ahead and put our flaps down. It's going to be ugly landing because I'm talking and doing it one-handed. Not all of it one-handed. But here we go. Let's see, I'm a little low and to the left on the ILS. So I'm going to come up and correct a little bit. There we go. The vector is back towards the runway there. I'm going to pause it one more time here. Just to show you that if you have this setting wrong or you forget to do it, you can see how much that messes with your needles there. So that's why it's important to make sure that you get that set. And that's something I know I was forgetting quite a few times as I was practic practicing this, uh, getting ready for the video. So coming in. And basically, this ILS it is emanating from this guy right here. In fact, the TACAN uh, also is emanating Believe, believe it's over on this side, but there's a little station there as well. But uh, you have on the left of your runway here. Let's see if I can get a little bit better view for you. So you got the ILS, and then you, and then you've got uh, these lights here. And this is another good way if you're coming in for landing to know if you're on your glide slope or not. So if you don't have your ILS or the runway doesn't have an ILS. You can actually look at these lights and know uh, how you're doing. You should have two green and two red. If you're too high, I believe you're going to have too many greens. And if you're too low, you have too many reds. I could be backwards there. Uh, but that is another indicator for uh, how you're doing with your lights. Altitude, so, altitude. So again, you stop talking. You guys can tell me, tell me in the comments I'm talking too much. It's all good. I just really enjoy this, and that's uh, yeah, that's why I do this. Gotta have fun. So I'm coming in for landing. Everything should be good. Light slope's good. Come down and flare. So there you have it. ILS landing. Uh, I will put up in the corner here. I've got a video. Uh, <laughs> I was doing this uh, yesterday in inclement weather, uh, zero visibility, and uh, that was a hoot. Um, let me tell you, if you're looking for a challenge, uh, that is a good one. Uh, zero visibility, ILS, thunderstorms, just, yeah, all kinds of fun. But in any case, that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments. I hope that this uh, helps demystify the ILS a little bit, but, uh, you know, I implore you to go out, do research if you need to. Uh, that's how I learned it here. And, um, you know, have fun. If you're not having fun, you're doing something wrong. So take care, everyone. Have a good day. And Dirty Diode, signing out.